Hi everyone, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the next instalment of my bookshelf tour for 2020. Admittedly, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted an instalment of this series, but I'm very excited to share the next part with you today. For anyone who has not been following along, I have been doing an in-depth bookshelf tour by looking at one shelf at a time. We happen to be on bookshelf eight, which is the first shelf on the second bookshelf that I own. So I own three Billy bookcases with the extensions on the top. This is the middle bookshelf, so the second one. Words are failing me apparently. For those who are just jumping in at this part of the series, my bookshelves are in my room and depending on which bookshelf we're talking about and which shelf we're talking about depends on how I can film these videos because there's not a huge amount of space. If I can stand in front of the shelves I will, however for the most part what I'm doing is filming an overview, showing you what the shelves look like, then I'm pulling everything off the shelf and then holding it up and talking about the books while sitting here, just because it's a little bit easier to film and a little bit less tricky. Also, some of my shelves are really tall. Okay, now that we've got the intro over and done with, I will leave a link on the screen to the playlist. So if you would like to see the previous installments of the series, you can definitely do that. But now we're gonna jump into the shelf overview. This is an overview of bookshelf eight. I can actually probably pull the camera back. And I'm sorry if the video is a little bit shaky, I am standing on my bed to do this. So these are all the books we're going to talk about now. Okay, so that was the shelf. Now we're going to talk about the books. The first book on the shelf is Tales from a Tall Forest by Sean McAuliffe. This is middle grade fairy tale retellings. Sean McAuliffe is an Australian comedian. He is very, very clever and has a very distinctive voice. I just adored this fairy tale series. But even more than that, the book is just beautifully illustrated on the cover but even more than that the actual hardback is stunning i don't know if you can tell but there's gold foiling all over it as well i think i've said before in one of my videos that if i was going to have a wallpaper anywhere i would have this design as wallpaper because it's gorgeous then there's a book that i didn't realize that i still had on my shelf i thought i'd unhauled this and that is the chemist by stephanie meyer which was her foray into mystery thriller books i also still have the host by stephanie meyer which I think is probably my favorite of all of her books. Anna Marie McLemore's Wild Beauty, which is a gorgeous looking book as well. I have Sean and Maguire's Wayward Children series, Every Heart a Doorway, Down Among the Sticks and Bones, Beneath the Sugar Sky, In an Absent Dream, and Come Tumbling Down. These are all urban fantasy novellas, stories featuring portal doorways about children who have traveled to other worlds and then have ended up back on earth, only to find that the real world no longer suits them and they're desperate to find their way back to their worlds. My favorite books in the series are Down Among the Sticks and Bones and Come Tumbling Down, which are Jack and Jill stories, and I just adore those two immensely. I have Embassy Town by China Mabel, which is a science fiction story all about language, which is why I've kept it, even though this book drove me absolutely bonkers when I read it. I just loved the exploration of how we communicate with others when we don't have a common language. Moxie by Jennifer Matthew, which is just one of my favorite book covers and just one of my favorite young adult contemporary books about girls rising up in a school against male patriarchy culture and standing up for themselves and it was fantastic. I have Glenda Millard's Kingdom of Silk series which is a collection of middle grade contemporary books that feel a little bit like magical realism but they're not. They're just so beautiful and whimsical. Glenda Millard is an amazing Australian writer. So the first book is The Naming of Tishkin Silk. Then you have Layla Queen of Hearts, Percy Angel's Suitcase, All the Colours of Paradise, Plum Puddings and Paper Moons, The Tender Moments of Saffron Silk and then Nell's Festival of Crisp Winter Glories. Each book really follows the stories of the Silk family, which is a family with, I think, five children, five or six children. All of the children get their own book, plus a couple of friends from the family as well. And they deal with all sorts of issues. I call them the happy sad books because there are really sad moments in the stories, but at the end you are left with such hope. Trigger warnings though, the first book does deal with the death of an infant. It deals with the topic of aging and grandparents growing older. You have characters who are dealing with illness. There is adoption. They're absolutely gorgeous and they're beautiful to read with kids, but you just have to know your audience going into them. So definitely books to read before you share them with kids. I have Circe by Madeline Miller. My Erin Morgenstern books, The Night Circus. This is the trade paperback edition that was the very first Erin Morgenstern book that I bought. And I bought it purely because of the cover. I had no idea what the book was about. And then I fell in love with it. This was before I even knew about Booktube and it's still one of those books that just has a special place in my heart. And then in my book haul revisited series, you'll have recently seen me talk about the two hardcover books that I own by Erin Morgenstern. So I found a hardcover of The Night Circus that I just thought was 
beautiful and I wanted to add to my collection. And also the Starless C, which is her most recent release. I have Frog Kisser by Garth Nix, which is a young adult fantasy retelling of many fairy tale myths. I have two Patrick Ness books. The first one being A Monster Calls, and this is the special collector's edition that is illustrated and is just gorgeous. As well as And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness and illustrated by Ravina Kai. This is a Moby Dick retelling from the perspective of the whale. I have the first three novels in the Heartstopper graphic novel series. So there is Heartstopper Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. This is a young adult male male contemporary romance story and it is so sweet. I have Captain Marvel Higher Further Faster by Liza Palmer. I also have The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily XR Pan. This is a young adult contemporary story with magical realism elements and it is utterly beautiful and one of the few books that actually truly made me cry. I also have The Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamora Pierce. So for the longest time I only had books 2, 3, and 4 but I managed to find a copy of the first book, Alana, The First Adventure. Then there is In the Hand of the Goddess, The Woman Who Rides Like a Man, and Linus Rampant. These books are very well known, very well loved, and I'm so glad that I still have physical copies of them, and I should really do a reread of them at some point. And the final three books on this shelf are the books from The Themis Files by Sylvain Novell. You have Sleeping Giants, Waking Gods, and Only Human. These are adult science fiction. They are absolutely fantastic books. They are told through interviews and observations with all of the characters. And we follow a young girl who one day stumbles across a giant metal hand in the woods. Over the course of her life, they begin to study what this hand is, who made it, where did it come from, and we begin to explore ideas of extraterrestrial life and what it means to be human. And I just, I love this series so much. The audiobooks for this are great. All right, that was everything that was on Bookshelf 8. In the comments below, I'd love to know if you've read any of these books or if you're planning on reading them. Or if you'd like to talk about them in more depth, feel free to start that conversation in the comments. I would love to chat to you about them. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.